There's a lot of great stylization that you can do to your photo through the presets and filters included in effects. The difference between presets and filters is that presets are going to be a stack of effects that you can adjust individually, whereas filters are going to be a single effect that you can customize. Using the presets pane in the left side, I can navigate to the various categories of presets that I like. Note that for users of the On1 Suite 9, the black and white application has been incorporated into the effects application now in the Suite 10. So if we want to click on that black and white category, we can see all the presets available to us. You'll notice you're getting a visual preview with each preset thumbnail. To apply a preset, you simply single click on that preset, and it will apply that to the photo. If you prefer to change to another preset, just single click on another preset, and the photo will automatically update. If you'd like to combine two different presets together, click on the first preset that you'd like to add, and then simply right click on the second preset, and click on Insert Preset. This will allow you to combine both presets and their attributes together. At any time, if you'd like to reset and go back to your original photo, simply click on the Reset button, and that will take your photo back to its original state. If you're having a hard time remembering some of the names of certain presets, we have our search bar function. You can type in any word that you remember is within the preset name. In this example, we're going to use Dirty. We can go ahead and choose that, and we see that we've got Dirty Bird, Dirty Money. Dirty Bird was the one that we were looking for. We can go ahead and single click that, and that gets applied to our photograph. Let's go ahead and reset the photo and change to another category of preset. So we simply click on the arrow, and now it takes us back to our main preset screen here. If we want to choose cinematic presets, we simply single click, and all of our presets are available to us. You can change the size of the thumbnail preview to make it larger or smaller by increasing or shrinking the pane. To do this, hover your mouse over in between the panes, and when you have a vertical bar with two arrows going in opposite directions, click and drag to increase or decrease the size as desired. You can also change how many columns of thumbnails that you have by going to View, Browser Mode, and then you can click on 1, 2, or 3. So if I want to click on one column, you'll notice that I get a single column and those thumbnails are then larger. Let's choose a preset and we can talk about customization within presets. I'll go ahead and choose this cold as ice. And as we go over to the right pane, you'll notice that I have various controls available to me. This first opacity slider allows you to change the strength of the preset. So if I take this down to zero, it's as if the preset isn't applied. And I can slowly change that strength based upon how much of that effect I want. When you change the overall settings opacity slider, it's adjusting everything within this stack. As we scroll down, we can see we have several different effect layers. We have a color enhancer, a photo filter, and a lens flare. To open up these layers and work on them individually, you can single click on the layer, and then that will open up that specific effect. You'll notice that by turning on and off layers, you can use this checkbox here. So our first two effects are turned off so that we can focus on the lens flare. Each effect is going to be different within the various presets, but can also be customized in various forms. For example, with this lens flare, I can use some of the presets that are already loaded within the effect for instant gold, or I can choose something like upright. I have further controls to adjust that effect in different ways, so I can increase the amount or strength or reduce that based upon what I want, along with some of the other customization options I have available here. If I single click on the photo filter layer, it'll bring up that effect within the preset. You can see that this particular effect is giving us a cooler tone to the photograph. The opacity slider within this specific effect just controls that cooler tone. It doesn't adjust the lens flare. Again, that's what the master opacity slider is for, when you want to control all the effects all at once. But when you want to work on them individually, you can use each one individually as needed. I have some quick options I can use within the filter type of graduated or bicolor, and you can see it gives me different looks within the photograph. I can choose multiple colors or, again, just select a different preset that I like. To look at the last effect that we have here within the stack would be the color enhancer, and that's just going to give me a little bit of punch in the reds, but if that's not something that you'd like, you can also delete layers within the stack. So I can go ahead and just click on the trash can and it removes that specific layer, but I still have my photo filter and my lens flare below. You also have the option of adding filters on top of the effects after you've added a preset. And you can just click on this add filter button and it brings up the various categories and filter options available to you. So you can continually add filters and continue stacking them one on top of the other as much as you like. 
you can use the preview button here to see the before and after of your photograph by single clicking on and off. So you can see here's our original photograph. There's a preview of what all of our effects are going to look like. And if you want a split screen view, you can click on the A and it gives you a before and after or you can single click to turn that back off. Once the photo looks the way you want it to, go ahead and click apply to save your changes.